<clears throat> hey, what's up turtles? Crick here with Black Outdoors. Today I wanted to do a video talking about a saw I've been using for a little while now, which is the Silky Saw Pocket Boy 170. On Silky Saw's website, this is going for $38.95. With that, it also comes with this uh, plastic carrying case, which works well for a storing device. This saw actually fits into the leather sheath I made for uh, the Baco Laplander folding saw, so that's really convenient, and I use it for that. Pop top here. You know, nothing fancy, but it is what it is. So some of the specs on this Pocket Boy 170 are. The 170 referring to the blade length, 170 millimeters, a 17 uh, centimeters, which is about six and three quarter inches. This is 1095 hard car high carbon steel, chrome plated. Definitely a decent amount of flex to the blade because it is tapered. Only cuts on the pull. Only cutting on the pull and I will demonstrate that. And the reason why I got the 170 in general is because it's about the same blade length as the Baco. And in addition to different blade lengths, I believe you can get a 130 uh, mil blade length as well. There's also about four or five different teeth configurations or sizes of teeth within the Silky Saw line. And this is the large teeth, which is about seven teeth per inch, which is right around or if not the same as the Baco. So I sort of got this for the intent, intention of uh, comparing those two saws. This red rubberized handle right here, which is about five and a half inches, about 14 centimeters. The width right here, the widest part of the saw is right down here, sort of in the palm swell, if you will, and that's a little over an inch, right around an inch, two and a half centimeters, which is right here. It does not lock closed. It's okay, there's a decent amount of friction so I'm not really worried about that, and I'm going to be storing this in a sheath all the time when I'm using it. So I'm not worried about it not locking closed because there's a you know decent amount of friction. See the lanyard hold here. Teeth are not protruding through at all. Nice little feature. I don't have one on there, but you could add one if you desire. Overall length of this puppy is right over 15 inches. And one of the reasons why I wanted to try this saw was because of one, it has a locking opening position, a single right here that I'm doing. This is the sort of lever, if you will. Snap first position and also open that up and it locks into a second cutting position. And this just allows you to enter, uh, get to some oddly positioned or placed limbs. If you're trying to cut underneath something, do an undercut, it just sort of increases its versatility that little bit, a uh, little bit more having the second locking position while it's open. But with all that being said, let's cut some uh, different types of wood and uh, see how it performs. This is tulip poplar, about maybe inch and a half, inch and three quarter in diameter. See how it goes through this uh, dead and dried wood. So I was cutting some tulip poplar right now with this and it did fine, did well enough. Um, for really hard wood, you know, this teeth size is really meant for pruning or green wood, which I'm gonna show um, 
you know, in a little bit, but regardless, it did well enough. And some of the trickiest parts of, if you're cutting dead wood or trying to buck dead wood down for firewood or whatever, some of the hardest part while you're out in the forest is just keeping it stationary and getting it, you know, sort of secured to give a really consistent and sort of accurate test of how well the saw cuts. But that's just part of being in the forest. And anyways, at this point, I'm just gonna keep cutting, uh, get some hemlock now and see how that cuts some dead hemlock. Pretty cool looking growth rings. That did pretty well. Like I said, these teeth aren't really meant for uh, for dry, dry hard wood, but it did really well. And it definitely takes a little bit of uh, different thought and technique when you're only cutting on the pool. This is Japanese made, and I've sort of always been sort of interested in trying out Japanese pool saw. If you've seen sort of like hand carpentry, people use Japanese pool saws, which look a lot different like this, but still just on the pool stroke, it's a lot different because this has a little bit of a, not a little bit, there's a de de decent amount of flex. Let me catch my breath. Decent amount of flex in the blade. You have to be really thoughtful that you're not just going in just hammering away at this, you know. You really gotta be thoughtful with your stroke and your tension because you can probably bend this pretty easy if you're not thoughtful. But the pull stroke works, um, works to your advantage using a lot of your back muscles. But with that being said, now we're gonna be wanting some green wood. There's a hemlock over here that came down in a recent windstorm uh, that's sort of blocking the trail we walked down to film a lot. So I'm gonna head over there, see how it handles, handle some green wood.
So going through this green wood, definitely you could feel a lot more material getting moved than with the dead wood. That makes sense because this large size uh, teeth configuration, that's what it's meant for, pruning, uh, pruning green wood. You probably saw some flex going on when I was sawing. I guess reasons being, the one was I was switching to my left hand because I'm really big into trying to get a lot of balance with my body, get coordination more on my left side of my body because I'm naturally right-handed. With that being said, sometimes my form's not that great and you probably saw it when I switched my left hand to try to do that. And also part of that's getting kind of weird. Sometimes filming things on camera, I just feel a little goofy. Um, but nonetheless, it worked really well through Greenwood, way, way better and fill efficiency sake than going through the hardwood and the dry, the dry hardwood. But with that being said, it's a nice saw. Is it gonna replace the Baco? I'll leave that for another video. But all in all, it's a nice little compact saw. Nice little compact saw. Happy with it, it's comfortable. I really like the, the two-way opening locking positions. Cha and cha. Yeah, all in all, good saw. So let me know your impressions, what you think about the saw if you have it. Leave a comment. Remember to you know like, subscribe, share all that with Black Owl. We're trying to, we're trying to you know grow, get as much support as we can. This is Craig signing out with Black Outdoors. Later, turtles.